Welcome, as it is the Vol Report with Cooper Mays, brought to you by City Heating and Air Conditioning, CityHeatAndAir.com, talking some NFL draft today and also taking a look back at spring camp. As it is official, Cooper, kind of the, the third phase of preparing for the season has begun, and those are summer workouts as you lead into preseason camp. Let's look back at at spring camp, first of all, it started as a team. What did you think about what you guys were able to get done? I, I was really happy with with our progress that we made, but more just the energy about the the team that we had. And you know, everybody's usually excited and fired up for the first few days, but I feel like we kind of sustained the whole spring, which was really nice to see. That's that's pretty rare, isn't it? Definitely. I mean, not 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 every year that you. You see that no. Usually most teams I've been on have been, you know, the first few days are really good and then it kind of gets to a drag after a couple. But I mean, it's good to see for sure. Yeah, I mean, people need to understand. Some people think, oh, it's just football. You're out there having a good time, but really you're working and there's no opponent that's coming up on Saturday to get excited for. So it's a different mentality. It is. I mean, it's it's definitely a grind and you know. It's it's hard, especially for younger guys that are that are taking a lot of reps and kind of trying to turn that corner from being a freshman and kind of working into the rest of their career. But it's huge. It's huge for development. It's it's great for development and and super ne like necessary for young guys to to have a big part in that. I don't want to read too much into it, but for the first time, Josh Heupel specifically mentioned some freshmen that were new on campus. I don't know if, if he if he meant to do that or that was a sign that this this freshman class is is pretty good. What do you think? Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't I don't really know what that means, like media terms wise. I don't I don't know. But um we've we've had a lot of good freshmen come in and you know, it's really nice to see like a good a good trajectory. You know, you see people start it's I mean, at the end of the day, we talked about this before. I mean, these kids are should still be in high school taking algebra, you know, like it's like, this is a whole different world and they got so much on their plate. So to see them kind of have some light at the end of the tunnel and, and, you know, little glimmers of hope, it's, it's really good. Yep. And along those lines too, there are a couple of names that I want to throw at you though, but you may have not seen them because they don't play anywhere close to your position at center. But are there any guys that, that, that caught your eye as far as true freshmen that were in camp? Um, my, my, like I said, or kind of like you said, I'm, I'm a center. So the first, the first group I'll point out is the, the O lineman that, that came in here is the young guys. They did a, a really good job, like better than probably anybody could have asked for. Like they, they got in here and, and kind of played some real football, which O line is kind of its own little beast. Like, I mean, like I said, I don't know much about all the other stuff like quarterback skill positions, but I feel like that stuff's a little bit more transferable based off of your athleticism. But at O-line, doesn't matter kind of how strong or athletic you are. If you don't have the right technique and don't know what you're doing fully, then then it's it's not going to look good. And they kind of had some 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 really good days where they kind of strung some stuff together. And it was really cool to see. Were there were there any young guys in, in particular? Were there any names you want to throw at me, or do you want to kind of leave it as a collective, so to speak? Uh, well, those guys include um, Gage Ginther, William Satterwhite, Max Anderson, um, and Jesse Perry. I think those are the four the four new guys that we had. Come. Yeah, that's isn't that the sign of of depth? Having they might not play this year, but having young guys that are you're thinking of the other freshmen, aren't you? Yeah, I'm, well, I'm trying to see it. I, I don't want to leave anybody out, man. I think those are all of the freshman guys, right? Those are, those are all the freshman guys. Everybody kind of runs together. The grades don't really click for me once people get here. They're kind of just – they are what they are. They're football players. You know? Totally understand. I'll pull up the roster and help you. First, though, if, if you can just kind of – while I'm doing that, if you can just kind of tell me uh, the, the depth-wise how much more secure Tennessee fans should feel now that there's some the freshmen that are – are showing some glimmers of hope early on camp. Yeah, I mean it's it's a big thing for for sure. I should have a lot of happiness in the fan fan base. Um, I don't really know how to put it, but it's it's really good to have young guys at at any position kind of have a a collective, you know, 
a collective group of guys that are all doing good. Because usually, you know, there's spotty guys. There's one guy here, one guy there. But to have a good collective group is really impressive. For the record, I checked the roster, and I, th- I think I think you got them all. So yeah. we're, we're, we're in really good shape there. Uh, it wasn't supposed to be a quiz game of memorize your roster, but there we go. With Cooper Mace, I'm Dave Hooker. It is the Vol Report with Cooper brought to you by City Heating and Air Conditioning, cityheatandair.com. I don't need to remind Tennessee fans what happened last September when you were out due to injury and things didn't go well at Florida. So uh, Tennessee at the time struggled at the at the center position. Now Bison Lang, I think, is that next guy that's being groomed. Is he? And what do you think of Bison at center at this point? Yeah, I, I would I would say so. He's the guy that got all the the snaps behind me. Um, has has gotten better. Has taken taken steps, which is all you can ask out of a young guy. You know. He's, he's kind of, he sits right beside me in meetings a little bit or the next seat over. So we talk a lot and he's, he's a smart kid, big kid and can do all that's needed of him for sure. How much does that help? Do you think that he's, he's right next to you and he's kind of being a sponge? Oh man. You, ah, I don't know. I, I think it's always good to have different points of view. I mean, like, cause you know, you see, you see a TV head on you know, it's one angle. You may step to this side and see a whole different picture. You know, you, I mean, it's the same picture, but or really anything, you know, I mean, you could have anything, you could put any object in that, but I mean, it's the same object, but if you see it from a different point of view, I think that's all kind of coaching is, is being able to get your, your point across in a way that's receptive to the learner, you know, and sometimes that voice may not always be coach Ellerby. Sometimes it may not always be me, but I mean, if somebody can get it across to him in a way that he understands it, or the learner understands it, it's 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 super valuable. I want to ask you about some of the guys that are going to go in the NFL draft? But before we get to that, we we mentioned Bison. Was it was it his idea to kind of glob next to you and try to learn as much as he can, or is that the coaches? Was that you? Um, no, it wasn't. I don't, I don't think it was anybody, but I think it was him. You know, he just kind of sat there so i wasn't gonna tell him to move i actually he wanted to sit right next to me and i told him to move and like scoot one seat over because i wasn't about to sit <laughs> elbow to elbow with him but <laughs> so you still gave him some knowledge he was just one seat down yeah there's a seat in between us i didn't want to like be you know skin to skin for an hour long you know i don't that doesn't right if, like if you all were at Let's say you're, if you're in your living room, you wouldn't sit side by side watching a movie, would you? Yeah. I mean, I'm just not big on that. I like my personal space. So don't <laughs> try to sit right now. But I'll help you all you like, all I can. I'll help you. But just don't sit right next to me. That's fair. That's fair. How often is he asking you questions? How much does he want to learn? Uh, I mean, whenever he needs it. I don't know how to quantify it or put a number on it right. But, um, you know, every 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 little bit in the meeting, you know, we'll, we'll talk about some stuff or he'll ask me kind of, he understands what things are, but sometimes he wants to know the why behind things are what they are. And I feel like I can kind of, without him asking in, in front of everybody, like in slowing stuff down, he can kind of talk to me on the side and be like, Hey, why is this, this? And I can be like, okay, that's that because of this, you know, Coop, this may be a big, no, I completely understand. This may be a big, like legacy existential questions. So pardon me if, if I go that direction, but you're, you're a Tennessee guy through and through local. Uh, your family's played at Tennessee and then you have an opportunity to make the program better. You've already done so by the way, you know, it's a, a 10 win regular season beating Alabama, all that you guys have done, but you have an opportunity to kind of leave a legacy with Bison of a guy that can take over at center. How, how proud would you be to be able to hand that to somebody that you feel confident is ready to take it and run with it? Well, the biggest thing for me is I, I try to pour into everybody. Not, I mean, I'm not just the guy that, you know, sits here and talks to the the one center behind me or whatever. I, I talk to everybody. Like, I mean, you know, if, if I see the left tackle doing something that I feel like is hindering him and he doesn't realize it, like, I mean, obviously I don't play left tackle, but I know how to, put knees inside of ankles and and move my body in a way that is conducive to, to power. So, I mean, if there's, if there's anything that I see and, and can kind of diagnose, I, I try to help people with it. 
Speaking of that left tackle position, a lot of people want to ask about Lance Hurd. A lot of people want to know about Lance Hurd. What did you think of his spring? Really, really good. You know, that's that's another guy that people don't even realize it, but he got into college um, a year ago in a couple weeks. So he hasn't even been in college for a full 365. So um, to see somebody go out there and be able to play left tackle and, and do what he does at that young with such little experience, it's it's really exciting. And, you know, there's a lot to be – a lot, a lot of ground that he can cover with it for sure. You come in, you're highly touted. You probably because of the NIL getting getting some payment, which I have no problem with players getting uh, payment, obviously. Um, but how quickly does he need to earn the other players' respect, or how quickly did he do that in order to be a guy that's part of the crew, so to speak? For sure, I think. I mean, there's obviously a little bit of just kind of you know who. Lance is he was a five star like you you obviously when he comes in you know him probably more than most people so that kind of sets him apart in in one way but I think a big thing is everybody kind of respects everybody's got a base level of respect obviously like I mean nobody's gonna walk up and and you know wash your feet or anything but you know like everybody respects somebody to a certain degree and and as long as you don't detract from that then you can keep building on it I mean as as long as you just kind of First thing is just kind of realize the flow of things and go with the flow, and then you can kind of start building on that. But he, he did a great job of, of fitting in and, and you know, coming in here and doing his work, doing stuff the right way and, and not distracting at all. You know, we talked about a lot of people that have come in, a lot of transfers, and haven't been distractions. Sure, that's, that's up to the individuals, the herds, the Thorntons of the world, and we could go on and on and on. But isn't a big part of it the corporate? Uh, the the culture I was going to say corporate culture but team culture that you guys have developed that makes it easier to step in and feel comfortable I, I think so that that could be one part of it and I think another thing could be the our coaching staff you know I talked about it before we're, we have a really pretty decently packed in schedule and everything's checked everything's mandatory you can't really you can't really skip over stuff and 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 do your own thing so kind of people know what they're getting into maybe that's a little bit of it but um i don't know yeah they've done a, they've done a really good job of just coming in and kind of buying into the culture and you know going going with the flow of things nfl draft uh, this week and then there'll be free agent signings uh throughout the following week um, you you had a decision to make whether or not to come back to tennessee do you think about that at all during this time or is that water over the dam under the bridge yeah i'd say it's probably more over the dam than under the bridge personally i don't really i mean i i've got so much stuff on my plate i can't i can't begin to worry about something like that of if i made a wrong decision or a right decision you know like i just, I, just, I don't know i've got i've got so much ground to cover we got so much stuff to do yeah absolutely and you got plenty uh, plenty going on let me ask you about four guys that i think are going to get drafted Let's start with McAllen Castles, who went from a guy who's at UC Davis a year ago. I want to say UC Irvine, but UC Davis. And now suddenly he's a top flight tight end thanks to the way he performed in the pro day. What do you think about McAllen Castles? I, I think exactly what you said. You know, a top flight athlete, top flight guy. He's really, a, really a great guy. Um, McAllen came in transferred in and was here for like one year, a little bit under one year, was my locker mate in uh, before practice and everything. So I'd see him every morning, you know, just a, a great guy to be around, you know, a freak athlete to one of the best pound for pound athletes on our team last year, one of the best pound for pound athletes I've probably been around. So, uh, wow, that's pretty strong. Good. That's pretty, I don't know what his testing was. If you look at his testing from pro day, it was, I'm pretty sure he ran maybe, in the four six range, jumped around thirty high thirties, I think, and I mean, had a ten plus broad. He he's he's really a freak athlete. No, it was you're right. It was remarkably good. I get. I guess I didn't know that coming in. I was I was surprised throughout the season how quickly he adjusted, and then what he did in pro day. When I ask you about some other guys that are going to get drafted, this is brought to you by City Heating and Air Conditioning, City Heat and Air dot com. Other HVAC companies will say maybe you need a whole new unit, not at city, maybe just a part or some coolant. 
Uh, and that's why integrity matters. 50 years in East Tennessee. Cornerback Kamal Haddon. What do you think of Haddon? I know he doesn't play the same side of the ball as you, but I'm sure you've had some give and take with him. For sure. Uh, another guy. So McCallum was right beside me. And if you went directly, probably three feet ahead on the other side, that was Kamal. So me, McCallum and Kamal all were probably within like 10 feet every morning, you know, chopping it up. Kamal's awesome, man. Kamal is Kamal is Kamal every day of the week, whatever you want to call it, 24-7, 365. Kamal is Kamal. And, and a lot of growth and development out of him the last few years. And, and you know, I obviously can't speak to cornerback stuff. I know he got a lot of interceptions and uh, all that. But he's a great guy. I love Kamal. Okay, now what about uh, Jalen Wright? And here's a guy that I think we all thought was a, a pretty good tailback, but he might be the best tailback in this draft. No doubt, no doubt. He's he's one of those guys. I I I knew it. I knew it coming in. Jay Wright's a guy that was running. He's one of those guys that you look at. You go into workouts and and. I think we probably talked about that before, but we're all elite athletes, I guess, whatever you want to call it. We're all elite athletes, but there are some guys out there when you just look around, we're all running, all doing the same stuff, but you look around and you're like, holy crap. Like that's, that's <laughs> different right there. Like this man looks like, like a prize horse, like running in the Kentucky Derby. Like it, it's crazy. And then, you know, obviously he runs like 22 miles an hour. I don't even know how people do that, but he does it. It's 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 crazy. He's one of those people that you look at and you're like that. That looks completely different than everybody else out here too. Joe Milton, don't know where he's going to get drafted. Ton of potential. Your your thoughts on Joe and how he can lead the team at the next level? Kind of kind of the same thing as you know. Looks different. Obviously, everybody knows how how hard he can throw, how far he can throw. Kind of like Anthony Richardson in my eyes to a certain degree, like, you know, goes out there and kills his combine, the throwing, the the pro day and everything. Like you said, just crazy amount of potential. He can do, he can do really great things. Yep. Pretty good player. He is Cooper Mays. I'm Dave Hooker. The Vol Report with Coop brought to you by City Heating and Air Conditioning, cityheatandair.com. Integrity Matters. This is a presentation of Off the Hooks.